come out for a bit of a summer day shoot with Steve and uh, come to one of his favourite locations from last year which is uh, not too far from Chesterton Windmill and you've got this beautiful row of trees as you can see behind me here leading through for this road um, just sort of covering each side of the road and you've got a lovely sweep to the road as well so we've just framed up a couple of images lighting is not ideal but I think we should get a couple of really nice images um, so I've framed up two shots already I've gone for one landscape and one portrait um, pretty much leaving the camera where it is at the moment. I'm leaning more towards the portrait because you've got more of the road in, so you've got more of that lead in line. And uh, I've just come over to the side a little bit just to make sure that the road is coming in at a nice diagonal into the scene. Um, we have got a touch of soft light. It's clouded over quite a lot here. Um, but I'm, one thing I'm very mindful of is there's a lot of, obviously, uh, highlights coming through the, the trees here. So, yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to work in post but um, still really nice scene um, we have got quite a lot of wind as well so i'm having to up the iso i'm at iso 640 at the moment um, and i'm at f9 sorry f10 um, and one 160th of a second just to freeze those leaves a bit because uh, yeah it is a bit breezy um, if anyone knows what type of trees these are can you let me know because me and steve have been having a bit of a debate about it and we've been onto some maps to try and have a look and the closest I could find was something called Holm Oak but I'm um, honestly no idea so if you do know let me know please. Um, so yeah I'll put both of these screens on now uh, both the landscape and the portrait let me know what you prefer in the comments. things that uh, both me and Steve looked at when we first got here was this uh, I believe it's called cow parsley and it's just lining the bank of the trees here on the uh, the right hand side beautifully uh, just love that that contrast of the white and the greens obviously following the line of the road and the trees as well so I want to do I want to try and do something to incorporate those into the photo because they're absolutely stunning um, not so uh, not so nice on this side it's just a bit of a messy field farmer's field but yeah, this, I, def I think, definitely works. So, yeah, I might walk down this way a bit and see if I can try and frame up some kind of image with that. So, although I said the conditions today aren't particularly great for landscape photography, it always pays to come out. So this place is only probably half an hour away from my home, and already I'm seeing images that, in the right conditions, would make fantastic images. So just behind me here, there's this, uh, obviously you can see this public, public bridleway that goes down into this field and there are some beautiful um, lone trees and there's some over that way as well. So yeah, in the right, on the right morning, you know, sunrise, nice little bit of mist or some, just, just something just to give it a bit of an ethereal look. Um, you could get some really nice images here. So basically what me and Steve have done is we've just walked to the end of the, uh, the road here. So you, the, those line of trees are pretty much to your, uh, to your right. Uh, so we've come up to the end here and there's a, a farmhouse just here. So basically we've worked our way up to the, to the top end uh, just to see what's around really. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do now is basically work our way back and uh, catch us some more images. So I still want to get those cow parsley images um, and I've seen a few of the compositions walking up this way as well. So there's a potential for quite a few images here, even in these conditions. Uh, there's always an image, um, may not be the best image, but it gives me a sort of incentive to come back here again and shoot when the conditions are optimal. Just talking about what I was talking about a moment ago, even this look, this lovely curve to this, uh, this road here and these trees lining either side of it, um, potentially quite a nice composition here. Don't think here this particularly works today, but as I say, if I come back maybe in autumn when all these leaves start to go to a lovely sort of rich golden color, um, again, maybe a touch of fog or, or whatever, you know, there's potential for so many great images here. So yeah, just get out in any conditions. You may not come away with a great image, but when you come to these sort of places, it just gives you an idea for when you can come back when the conditions are perfect. Just as an example, one of the lone trees I was talking about a moment ago is this one here. And then in the background, you can see there's one over here as well. 
There are some power lines you'd have to contend with, but with some of the tools in Photoshop today, it's very, very easy to get rid of those. Um, so don't let that put you off. But uh, yeah, just met up with Steve now. And uh, yeah, you can see again, this road just goes on seemingly forever with these beautiful trees lining either side. What a great location. So walking down, I noticed this on the way up, there's a tree, an old oak tree, right in the background over there. I'm gonna, can I zoom in on that? Can you see that? Yeah. Um, wow, proper old oak tree. I've just had a look. There may be a way to get into that woodland. I'm not sure, you need to go back up this path, up this road here, and there's a path that goes off to the left, um, kind of in towards it. So I might not do that today, but definitely one to come back to. There's definitely not a photo of that tree from this side because it's just a bit, a bit boring. It's just, it's just a tree. You know? <laughs> There's nothing else that brings the scene together, but it's definitely one I'll return to. Just look at the light over here now. Beautiful. Again, not really a photo today. Um, the, the background's a bit messy, but there's so many options here. Come back to this line of trees now and uh, framing up a few images. Steve's just to the, uh, to the right, uh, to my left. Um, and there are some compromises to be made here. So I like where I'm at, where I am at the moment. So I'm right in the center of the road. Uh, so I've got the, the road right in the center leading through the frame and obviously the trees either side. And it is a nice scene, but by being over here, the third tree in on the left-hand side is clashing with the one just behind it. Um, I don't think it's too major of an issue, but yeah, it's something I'm gonna to have to think about when I'm, when I'm editing this. Um, but it is what it is. Um, and also on the right hand side, there's a bit less in the way of canopy, um, which is just not balancing the scene very nicely. I'll explain to you what I'm doing on the back of the camera. So as you can see, um, on the right hand side here, I've got this big blown out section of, of sky. So what I'll probably do with that is I'll use the clone stamp tool in Photoshop, um, sample with an area sort of over here or here where the leaves are and use the darken function just to basically put those leaves in there so to create more balance in the scene uh, will make it a lot, lot better. So yeah, let me put this one on screen now and let me know what you think in the comments. I'm oh, really enjoying this. I, mean, I, know, I know the lighting conditions aren't perfect, but this, I think is a, is a great educational sort of morning out. Definitely. It's, it is, it's definitely one of them places where you think you're just gonna almost, almost a snapshot. Yeah. And as soon as you start taking or trying to take an image, it's an extremely complex composition and yeah. the difficulties are getting it exactly right. And it is a difficult place, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, it's it's not know, just a road with trees, no, is it? No, it's, 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 it's literally all about, you know, you get your camera and you, you move a little bit this way and you yep. move a little bit that way, a little bit higher, yep. just to try and get that separation between the branches. And I don't think we're going to come, come away with some fantastic images from here this morning at all, because no. the lighting just doesn't work, but it really gets you thinking about composition. It, it's, um, that's what we're going to get out this morning. It's about, the, it's, it's educational, it's the, it's, it's getting that composition as best as you can and there's definitely compromise. Doesn't matter where you move, whether we move left or right, mm. up or down, there's compromise everywhere yeah. from, from separation of the trees to the road not being exactly where you want it. You, you know, and, and that's, it doesn't matter about the light and the atmosphere, mm. they're, they're the challenges we've got. And I just found that myself, you know, I was just shooting pretty much where your camera is now, yep. but coming over to where I am, it's nice because it does free up some of the separation between the trees, but again, you don't get the centre of the road. No, it, it changes the composition completely. And and and, that, and having that, um, you know, getting getting deep into the image and things like that, and and trying to sort of get rid of them problems by doing that, or even mm. coming wider, or, or, or you know. But it's literally we're moving every element from moving left to right to getting deeper into the image, coming further away. Yep. You know, every part of it is critical with this image. And that's before you start dealing with the challenges of the wind as well yeah, and the light. Right. Yeah, yeah, with <laughs> ISOs and everything. That, yeah, that's, that's, you know, so it seriously isn't, I mean, it looks beautiful from here. You could bang and that's the shot. Yeah. But, you know, where my camera's set here, the problems I've got is 
all these trees on the left hand side are all overlapping. All these on the right are all separated, all on the left are yep. not. If I move over, then the road's not in the middle. Exactly. What I've done with this one is I do like, I like that. That's why I put the long lens on. I've got deeper into the nice. image and, um, and trying to sort of separate it that way and getting rid of that sky then as well so so again we've got the, the problem of the sky haven't we and things like yeah, that yeah i've been struggling with that to be honest with you and i did mention that just a moment ago so i might st i might go over to my 100 to 400 and go really deep into deep the scene in. like you've done here yeah. because the, yeah that and, does cut out the sky like you say and it might work again we, we've this is just within a five meter square we, we, you know walking forward might help as well G going back won't help because we've got this this area here that's going to stop us but well that's the other you, thing we were saying a minute ago is is you you guys won't see this on the camera this um wet patch wet, of, yeah. of, of concrete or tarmac um just completely ruins it so we've had to come forward quite a bit from where we ideally probably would have wanted to shoot to get that mm. out of the scene Mm. But the, uh, again, thinking about it now, if we were back here, we'd get more of that sky. Yeah. Where if we can, if I feel, I, I know as you move forward, we start opening the sky still. I know that, but mm. but that's why you use a long lens. Yeah. Get the long lens on instead, and, and 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 you've sort of what you're doing. You're trying to eliminate each problem at a time, aren't you? Uh, yeah, what, exactly. And you might eliminate it by going a portrait instead. Think, you know, you'd eliminate more of the sky by going portrait because the sky is to the left and to the right. So. There's, there's so many things to think about. It's not it's not just a shot where you're just gonna, you know, you know you could you could get your phone and go with that and that's oh that's beautiful. You know, yeah. it would be very easy to rock up here, <laughs> yeah. be in awe of the location, yeah. get your camera out and take a shot. Yeah, the what? difference that makes a landscape photographer is is that finesse, that yeah. just fine tuning of the image. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do this morning. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, but that's where we would walk away from it, get back home and be really disappointed with the image. And I have done it so many times. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But it, it's, but, and, and you always think, could I have moved to the right hand side yeah. that, that extra? What was stopping, why didn't mm. I, you know? But that, that's, that, you know, that's It, it all always about, pays to get to a scene or get to a location and think, right, how can I improve this image? Yeah. Oh, that's, 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 it's, I think it's the most critical part. Get set up, get the image, right, what, what's actually, what do you not like in the image and how can you, you change it? And the other good thing is, I think, coming out with someone like yourself, coming, it does, you don't really, you don't even have to be a sort of, and you don't have to be a fantastic photographer to discuss these things and just see it in, just seeing the, the image in someone else's Bouncing eyes. Bouncing ideas off yeah. people and, off, yeah. Because yeah. everyone sees things differently. You know, I, it's it's why I, like your woodland photography is, is is like second to none. I've learnt so much from meeting you over these last eighteen months from woodland photography. I've come away with it, and I'm a better I'm a better landscape photographer from doing the woodland. You, you know, you just see other compositions yeah. within it, and it's fantastic. And that's well, why I like yourself, bouncing you, off people. You, you know, you you do more of the the bigger, wider scenes, which I'm really not comfortable with. Mm. So I've learned a lot of you in the same in the yeah. same. Um, Thought process so yeah it's, it's, it's funny because <laughs> it's, i i now sort of i'd be my main lens used to be the 2470 and i still leave that on the mm. camera i'll probably shoot more now with the the 70 to 300 yeah that long lens well you know me i love i love those tight yeah. scenes yeah <laughs> uh, and again a, t a day like t today i would have probably normally not put the long lens on or certainly wouldn't have done two years ago no and and but that, that's made my photography so much better for that flexibility of your, you know, your mindset. Yeah, definitely. Right, we're going to get some more images then. Yeah, I'm going to try and, <laughs> like I say, I'm going to go over, over to my 100 to 400. I'm going to try and get some tighter crops, I think. I, th um, I think that tighter crop will work, especially as we move down as well. I think, I think it might be worth us keeping the, the camera on the tripod mm. and, and just working it as we walk down because it'll, It'll obviously constantly change, won't it? But I, I like, you know, I like that bit there, which is on what I'm trying to capture here. But I can see it. There's no distractions around the outside. Mm. It's a these beautiful different shades of green, yeah. and and then it's just about working that separation of the trees there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do it. So we haven't moved on since I last spoke to you. Um, Steve had an idea. I stole one of his ideas. It's payback for the roaches a few weeks ago. Go back and look at that video. Um, <laughs> and it's incorporating not both sets of trees each side of the road, just the ones on the left-hand side. Um, 
And really what we've done is basically concentrated uh, at about 250 mil on the trees on the left-hand side. Not this immediate one here, but the second one in. Um, and then going on all the way into the background. Just including a bit of the road and including a bit of the grass on the right-hand side, but excluding these trees on the right-hand side. I think it might be my favorite composition in the morning so far. Um, one, one other thing I do like is on the right hand side here as well, you've got these um, bits of rapeseed dispersed within this field. So you just got that little, those little pockets of yellow, just making that, that photo that a little bit more interesting. Um, I really like this. I've played around with different um, focal lengths, as I say, um, and different apertures. I tried one at F16 and one at F18. I know I might get a little bit of diffraction with that, but my plan when I get into post is to, is to actually soften this image slightly anyway. Um, go for a bit more of a sort of painterly look. So I'm not overly bothered about the, the absolute pin sharpness of the image. Um, yeah, it should look quite nice. So I'm gonna put this one on screen and uh, we will make our way back down this way. Okay, so I think I've done the best that I can do with the cow parsley. Uh, we've come pretty much to the start of where we first started this morning. And uh, it's been very difficult to try and frame up a shot with this. Um, same issue we've been having all morning, just trying to get that separation between the different trees. But I think I've got one which is, which is going to work out right and there's not too much sky in the frame. Um, I'm standing where, well I was, was standing pretty much where Steve is now, just a bit further back. Um, not really incorporating much of these trees on the right hand side, but really concentrating on the ones on the left hand side, and obviously this, this sea of cow parsley just at the foot of the trees there. I think it works out okay. Uh, I've taken two images. I've got, well, several images actually. I've done one um, without any people in the frame, but then this couple came walking past just a moment ago holding hands and uh, walked through the frame. So I've taken a few of images of them in the shot, trying to get them pretty much on the right hand third walking along the path, um, which might make quite a nice addition to the scene. Um, so yeah, I think I've done the best I can with this particular shot. Uh, but uh, yeah, wow, what a, great, what a great day. I've really, really enjoyed it. As I say, I don't think I've got any game-changing images this morning, but it's definitely a location I want to return to when the conditions are just right. Uh, so yeah, not sure what we're doing now. Um, there is a little lake just over here, which I think we can get access to, so we might go and have a look at that. Um, but yeah, great morning. Had an absolutely fantastic morning with Steve. A great, great location. Um, one I'll definitely return to. I don't think I've got anything particularly great today, um, but it is definitely a location that I'm gonna to return to many, many times. It's only about half an hour from home. Um, so, yeah, uh, we, we might possibly stop at Chesterton Windmill on the way back. Um, although there is a bit of an issue at the moment in, well, for the past two years, it hasn't had the sales on it. So I don't think it's necessarily going to work but we might have an idea for that. If we do, we'll stop and I'll talk you through it. Um, but if not, the, uh, I'll end the video here. So I uh, just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed watching this and if you're new here, please uh, consider uh, subscribing. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. So just as we were packing away, two riders came past on horses and I just had to retake the same scene I talked earlier with the two walkers going past. Uh, just having the, you know, obviously the addition of horses just makes that photo that little bit more interesting. So, yeah, let me put that one on screen. But uh, yeah, I think as I say, 
think we're done for this location. So thanks for watching. See you soon.